Hey there! In this video I'm going to show you how to get started with my Extra Life Donation Tracker. First we'll cover how to download it, where to find documentation, then I'll show you the GUI and how the GUI works, what options you'll want to change, and then finally I'll show you how to use it in OBS or XSplit depending on which video you're watching. So someone has pointed you to this page here, uh, or I guess maybe you're watching this on YouTube and uh, so you click on the link on the bottom and this is where my releases will always be. I'm recording this before the release of 6.0 so the last release I made was 5.3 and so what you would do is you would click here on Windows download and it'll ask you about downloading the file. I've already got a 6.0 file on my computer so I canceled it but you'd obviously want to save it and keep track of where you saved it on your computer. If you want to find out what's changed since the last time and whether it's worth updating, you could go here to the release notes. So if you click on V and then whatever number of the release, um, here's what it looks like. It'll take you to the GitHub page. Here's what I've added, how to use it, uh, more instructions, some release notes. So lots of information that could be pretty useful to you if you want to decide whether or not it's worth upgrading. Um, here's a link to my Extra Life campaign if you want to donate to the campaign. Here are videos. These will be replaced with videos for version 6.0 once I'm done recording and editing the video. And finally, if for whatever reason you prefer uh, written documentation instead of video documentation, or maybe after you've watched this video you just want to find that one little piece you couldn't remember, you can go to here to my documentation. And that looks like this. And so um, the first three parts would be very useful to you if you're a user of the software, how to install it, how to use it, and um, how to edit the configuration files if you're not using the GUI. And then below that, these are just uh, useful if you're going to be helping with development, if you wanted to uh, help us develop. One last thing I wanted to mention uh, while we're here on the GitHub page, is if you find an issue, something that's a bug or something that's not working the way you want, or if you think of something you think I should add, you would just go to the GitHub page. So actually, if you were here, you go to view on GitHub, and then go to issues, and then click on new issue. Oh, I'm not signed in on this on this page. But essentially, I've got uh, some templates there if there's a bug, a template if you would like to ask for a new feature. You could just fill that out and I will get back to you. So I've, I've helped 73 bugs, although some of these are tracking for features I wanted to add. All right, so that's it for this part of the video. The next part is going to be how to use the GUI. Okay, you've now downloaded the file. If you're on Windows, if you're on Linux, the other instructions will have shown you how to get the files you need to start the GUI. Let's start it up. It takes a little while to start because it's uh, compressed into just one file, but that makes it a lot easier to launch. So the important first, so this will be blank uh, for you. Mine will eventually refresh with my information because I've used it before. And then um, this command line uh, thing here, I've got it here because it gives you some information on what's going on. So you can kind of use that if you're having issues to, sh to let me know what's going on and what's going wrong. And I'll, I also use it to communicate to you if there are things going wrong. Usually if anything here is red, that means something happened that was unexpected. Uh, on the off chance that there's a bug that causes everything to crash and you're on Windows, what you want to do then is uh, use PowerShell to start it up and then it, the errors will remain on this command line because this one will disappear if the program crashes. Okay. 
if you're on Linux, uh, because the GUI is exactly the same, except it'll match your uh, window settings. You know, it, it, instead of this, it'll look like the decorations you have on Linux. I'm just making one video because everything else is exactly the same. If you're on Linux, instead of having this command line pop up, you'll have launched it from a command line. And so that'll be there for you to check for any issues that are happening. Okay, so that's how you launch it. Let's take a look first at the settings window. So this is all the information you need to enter in order for the program to work. So the first thing you need is your participant ID. And where do you find that? Well, if you were to go to your extra life page, so this one's gonna bring mine up. All right, so here's, here's my page. And uh, yeah, if you have a web browser that hides the entire URL, you just wanna click up here and you'll see that the URL ends with participant ID equals and then a number. So you just wanna copy that number and paste it right into the settings right here, okay? The next thing you wanna do is you wanna set your text folder. So your text folder is a, the most important part for how this program works. It will take all the information that it grabs from the Extra Life website and write it to text files, which you'll then use in either OBS or XSplit to display the information you want to display. And we'll get to that in the next section. The other thing you can do that's important here is to make sure you've copied and pasted or typed in the right participant ID, you can validate it and it'll tell you that either you have yours right or you completely accidentally entered someone else's which would be one heck of a coincidence. And you can see here that there was information telling you that yes, we were able to reach uh, reach that website, okay? Your team ID, it's very similar. You would just click on the team that you're part of. Then up here, you see your team ID. You put it in there, validate your team ID, you're good. Uh, currency symbol, just uh, I think in all the places where Extra Life is run, America and Canada, it's a dollar sign, but you can change it to whatever you wanted it to be. For donors to display, this is, and again, I'll demonstrate this in the next section, but this is how many of the last X number of donors do you want to appear on the screen? So I'm usually okay with five, but I don't have a ton of donors. Um, you'll have to, it'll depend on how many you get. And also it'll depend on how many you want to show on the screen at once, because it could potentially, you know, overrun your screen. Then th these two parts here, the tracker image and the donation sound, uh, this is so that when someone donates, it'll show up a little pop-up on your screen and you can have whatever image you want there and whatever sound you want to play. If you don't have anything to use, you can click on grab from GitHub and it'll download the file for you uh, it'll be an, an image file and a sound. So uh, let me show you what that'll look like. Now this is green so that you can make the green disappear in OBS or XSplit, but this is what the alert will look like. Now you see how the words there are too big. Well, that's the next part here. You can change the font and the, and the color. So I'm gonna change the font to be smaller, let's say 24, let's see how that looks. Okay, maybe that's a little smaller than I want, but you can kind of play around and see, maybe 26 works a little better. But anyway, whatever you want it to be. So we'll see exactly how you use this in the next section. You can change the color, maybe you don't like white text, maybe you want the text to be red. And you can change the background color. Maybe you don't want to use a uh, green chroma key. Maybe you want to use blue um, or some other color. You, whatever color you want to erase uh, in case you need it to, I guess, not match with the uh, the color of the, the image you have there. So go back and put it to green. Did that, did that take? Let me see. Green, no, that didn't take. Gotta bring this way up. There we go. All right, so we're back to green. All right, when you're done with everything, just hit save. If halfway through you get to some kind of mistake, 
and you don't know what to do, you can hit revert and it'll go back to whatever it was the last time you opened it. Now, I just wanna show you really quickly what kind of image you want if you wanna have some image there. You want to have a transparent image, usually a PNG file, and you want it to look like this. You want there to be, if you were to open it in, in Photoshop, a whole bunch of dots here uh, or a checkered background. That means that all of this is, is transparent and whatever you have here will show behind it. If this was white, that's not gonna look good when you put it in into the tracker for OBS. You want it to be a transparent background and then whatever image you have, right? So as you can see, when I bring a background back, because it's transparent, you see me and you see me in front of this thing, right? So that's the type of image you want. You can find them all over the internet or you can make your own. Okay, that's everything you need to know for the setup. This window here was the tracker. Oops. Let's uh, open that up again. We'll move it over. Progress bar hasn't been implemented yet. Uh, force refresh is if you want to uh, refresh the information on this window. It refreshes about every 15 minutes, but maybe that's not... Uh, sorry, every 15 seconds. Maybe you need it to come in a little faster. Fine. But this is kind of a representation of most of the information that's in the text files that this program collects. So it kind of gives you a chance to do a sanity check that the information is what you expect it to be. Because this is drawing from those text files. Uh, in fact, let me open up the folder so you can see what the text files look like. Okay, so let's take a look at the top five, te top five team participants. And there you go. So uh, this should match what's here. Alia, James, myself, Martin, and Zeldar. So you see it's all there. That's where it's grabbing it from. When everything is all set, all you need to do is hit run. And it'll give you a few messages here about the settings. And once you start seeing timestamps appear on here, that's how you'll know that it's grabbing the data from the API and it'll start updating your text files, which we'll see in the next section. And this data will also update every 15 seconds or so if there is a new change. So if someone donates or something changes while it's running. So if anything, if you see anything red here that it couldn't reach the API, sometimes that happens on game day. Too many people are trying to use it. One of the years we had a DDoS attack on Extra Life. And so it couldn't be provided. It'll show it on there. Um, at this point, I think I've covered most of the cases where there could be a crash due to that. So the software shouldn't crash, it just won't update. But if it does crash, feel free to file an issue and let me know so that I can try and fix it. When you're done, you can hit stop and go to file quit, or you can just go file quit and it'll stop either way. Uh, a couple quick things here so that you can check for updates. It'll let you know if you have the latest version or not. You can see a, the about page, which gives you some information on where to file bugs and so forth. And finally, if you go to documentation here, it'll launch the web page with the documentation as we saw before. So now let's move on to the next section. How do we use this in OBS? All right, and this is how you would configure EL Donation Tracker for XSplit. Now, I haven't used XSplit in about five years, so um, there's gonna be a couple things that I'm not sure how to alter, um, but I'll assume that if you're using XSplit, you know how to use XSplit, you just wanna know how you should use um, EL Donation Tracker with XSplit. So let's start off with the um, Donation Tracker. So that is uh, just to demonstrate again. Here's your tracker. Here's your GUI. So if you hit test alert, you got a donation. that comes up, that goes back. So that's how that works. So um, how do we use that within XSplit? Well, what you wanna do is go to add source 
then go to screen capture, window capture, and look for uh, tracker, GUI.exe. Depending on how many windows open, you have open, this may be a long or short list. So we bring that, uh, oops, that was the wrong one. I meant to say, let me remove that. I meant to say, look for tracker, uh, GUI EXE. There we go. So there's the tracker window. All right. All right, so it's there, but uh, we don't necessarily want it to look like this, right? So let's right click on here. That'll bring up your editor for the tracker. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is um, go to color and click chroma key. So now you'll see that the green disappears. So let's trigger that again so you can kind of see what that's gonna look like. You got a donation. Of course, we have a black background, so it's not gonna help that you can't see the words. So let's see if we can change that. All right, so I've added an image slideshow behind it. So now let's trigger that. You got a donation. There you go. Again, not the perfect situation there. And um, still got to figure out exactly how to change the font you color on Windows on Linux. It's nice and white. But, you know, you get the idea, right? So it'll appear there. Um, but still, we don't want necessarily the... Um, you know, the top bars and all that stuff. So you can come over here, go to layout and on cropping. Just go ahead and crop. Oop, might have gone a little too far there. Okay, so just kind of crop it in here and crop it in there and crop it in there and crop it in there until you've got something that doesn't show anymore. And then you got a donation. There you go. So that's how you add that. And again, um, uh, not exactly the best thing to have behind it, but you can kind of see what's going on. So uh, the big thing that we generate here are a bunch of text files. So we're going to add a source. Uh, we're going to go text. Then you do custom script, edit script, and then here you're going to say load text from a local file then click on this dot 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 and we're going to go to where we set them remember i said i do mine in dropbox so we come in here and do um let's do the last n uh, donation names horizontal and let's see what else let's go to settings all right update text all right and then just do a scroll and you'll kind of see it scrolling. Let's uh, speed it up a bit. Whoa. Now, you obviously don't want to do it that fast, but that kind of shows you what you can do here. So you can have, you know, the last 10 uh, donations and you can have that scrolling. And every time someone donates, that'll update. Uh, I'm going to stop that scroll. Um, you can also um, have, eh, I guess I'll add it as a different one. So let's add another text. Uh, oh, where'd that go? Well, I guess I hit cancel, so it went away. Uh, let's add a, <laughs> another text source. And we'll go custom script and script. Look from file. This time we'll do the uh, goal. So this is how much we hope to, hope to raise. 500, there's 500. <clears throat> now remember I said I'm not a... Uh, I'm not a uh, XSplit guy. I haven't used XSplit in a long time. So I'm not sure how you change font size in XSplit, but I'm sure it's nice and easy to change. But that's one example. We'll hit OK so that stays. We'll add another source just for one final example. Custom script, edit script. Load from file. And then uh, let's say the team captain, right? if you're part of a team and then hit okay and so there's the team captain's part of his name since again fonts are giant in xsplit for some reason i'm not sure of uh definitely not like that in uh an obs but uh let's see if we come over here if we can figure it out calibri outline yeah i'm not entirely sure but again i'm assuming that if you're using xsplit you know how to use xsplit you know how to add text because maybe you're making title screens or whatever i'm just showing you that 
how you grab and use the text um, from um, EL Donation Tracker. And as things update, so um, let's say instead of uh, our goal, this was the amount uh, raised. So, oops, let's go, uh, let's go here, edit script, and let's see, total raised, update. So I've raised 50 bucks so far. Uh, so each time someone donates while Yale Donation Tracker is running, it'll update that text file. And when it updates that text file, it'll update the text on your screen. So this number will grow as people donate. And so um, that's how you can use Yale Donation Tracker. So um, happy streaming, good luck. And remember, it's for the kids.